Doc, as you know, this is Barn, and I've got some very exciting videos for you today. Um, the plan is to start this up for the first time after uh, a few months, uh, probably about six months over the winter it's been out of action. So the plan is to talk you through exactly what I'm doing to uh, check that everything's good to go, um, and then fire it up really. Um, the battery's been disconnected, so I'll talk you through reloading the fuel trims because it's a bit different on a, a Bridgeport race extension. Uh, RX8 to a normal one where you just kind of turn the key and off you go. Um, and fingers crossed we don't smoke anything out, so let's go take a look under the bonnet first and foremost. Hi guys, so this is the RX8 Franklin Rex engine, uh, which isn't much to look at, sorry about that. However, um, what I want to do is just check all the fluids, make sure everything's there, present and to uh, a good level, uh, just before we get started. Um, so yeah. Let's have a bit of a look. Um, one note is, is that you shouldn't really check the oil level in an RX-8 when it's cold and not been run. Um, so uh, I will check it just to make sure that there is oil still left in there. Um, it's worth mentioning as well, I've checked under the car to check there's no leaks or anything like that over winter um, and everything seems fine. Um, so barring anything going in there and uh, drinking all the oil, there should be some in there. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll run it up to temperature and then when it's cooled down again, um, generally it's about the time it takes to fill up the tank of fuel, so sort of five odd minutes, uh, check the oil level then and just check that everything's fine and, and dandy. Um, as you can see here, the brake fluid is just under max, which is exactly where we want it. Uh, the screen wash is also present, very helpful, especially if you're going for an MOT. Uh, and the coolant level in here is about halfway full. So we should be fine on that one. Um, so that's absolutely fine, it's just between the, the low and the high point. So everything under here looks absolutely fine. Um, over the winter I had to change the MAF O-ring um, and the battery's been disconnected and charged, so everything should be fine to fire it up now. So uh, let's just have a quick gander at the, uh, the brakes. Um, I've had a check of the tyres and brakes actually, it's probably a good point to say. Um, stop that. The battery has been disconnected and on charge, so that's got plenty of juice and it should be enough to uh, spin them over and get them started. Uh, I've checked the brakes um, as I've had the car up on jack stands over the winter. I've checked all the brakes are still free and absolutely fine. Uh, I've checked the tyres are absolutely okay. Um, as you may have seen in some of the clips um, at the beginning of the video, uh, the Daily Mazda 6 was wearing these wheels for a little while um, just because I needed to get some new tyres and it was a, a more cost effective way and look pretty good. Um, so we did that. So let's close the lid, have a bit of a look at the inside and um, hopefully turn that key and hear that brat. Right, here we are once again inside the beast. It has been far too long that I've not been sat inside this beautiful place. I think we should take a moment. Yeah, that's Cool. So here we are inside, Frank. Um, standard R3 fare, really. Um, you'll have seen it, uh, or should, could have maybe seen it on the car throttle videos. If not, check them out, because Alex does go on about the interior a bit. It's quite a nice place to be, especially for, for this era of, uh, of Japanese machinery. Um, it's worth noting, before we fire up, I have opened the uh, uh, front and rear doors of the barn just to get a bit of flow through so that we don't smoke everybody out. I say by everybody, I mean me. You guys won't even smell it. You lucky sausages. So, as I said, we've checked everything over, made sure everything's fine. Um, now it's time to start her. Now, just to warn everybody, uh, it's been a while and uh, bridge ported race extended RX-8 engines are a bit of a bit of a challenge to get going. So uh, it might take a bit of encouragement. It's not a sign of low compression. Watch as a light, it is a sign of low compression because this is running about 4.9 to 5.2 across various faces of the, of the rotors. Um, which is due to the nature of the overlap of the ports. So nothing to worry about, but factuellement. So battery's working, 35,000 miles. It's a good start. Wait for all of the lights to go. Are we ready? I'm ready. Not going to 
to lie, that started a lot better than I thought it was. Now you guys are actually sat on the dashboard, so you've probably got a little bit of a wobble there. Um, so apologies on that one. Now, normally with an RX-8, um, after the battery's been disconnected, the engine needs to learn the fuel trims. In doing so, what the engine does is it starts off at a high idle, obviously when the engine's cold, and as it settles down, it just keeps going down and down and down and down and down until it nearly stalls. And then it will adjust the fuel trims automatically and go, oh, I need to give it a little bit more, I need to give it a little bit less, and so on. Uh, until you settle at what should be around, I think, about 900 RPM, uh, between 800 and 900 RPM for a stock uh, RX-8 Renesis engine. Now, Frank's a bit of a special case, bless him. Um, so what I need to do is basically keep the RPM above 2000 with my uh, magic right foot. The reason being is because of the overlap, as I said, and the low compression, um, it needs to idle at about 2000 RPM, which when it's warm and it's learned the fuel trims, it's the ECU's been calibrated and, and mapped to do so. Uh, however, when it's cold, it still tries to go as low as it can. And if I just take my foot off the throttle, you'll hear, hear things go down a bit and it's not a happy place. Um, so we'll keep that up, um, and what I need to do is just manually keep it high enough such that uh, when the temperature gauge uh, starts to creep up and the three bars on the dashboard of an RX-8 start to go away, uh, the R3 start to go away, uh, they're the cold limiter. Um, once everything's to temperature, uh, I will show you those. Um, in fact, let's have a quick look now. There you see, three bars there. Uno, dos, tres. Uh, three uh, bars there, they're the cold limiter, so I can't, I physically could not rev it over 5,000 RPM if I wanted to, not that I would want to, because that would be a very silly thing to do. You may also see the DSC flashing light there, that's wonderful. Uh, that's because the DSC needs to be calibrated left and right um, for the wheel alignment, so that it knows when the wheel angle uh, is different from the requested angle and therefore the DSC can kick in. So that's literally just a case of whiz the wheel to the left, whiz the wheel back to the right and then back to centre and that'll go away. And then when I turn the engine off and back on again, the traction control warning light on the right over here, somewhere, there, whee, um, that will go away as well and then we'll have traction control back again. Um, however, um, as is quite obvious um, for most cars, um, if not exacerbated and even more important for an RX-8, never thrash an engine when it's cold. Um, I mean, that's just good manners. Buy her a drink first at least. Um, the first uh, temperature uh, limiter has now gone out. I've realised I've been talking for quite a while now. Um, so the way that I found to teach them, and I don't know if this is the de facto way for a race extended engine, um, is to let the revs drop. Um, sometimes it picks it up and it goes, actually, you know what, this isn't good, and it starts to pick the RPM back up again. Uh, other times it stalls. Um, now the reason I've let that first light go out is you should always let uh, a rotary engine warm up a bit first to avoid the risk of flooding, um, which if anybody has had a flooded rotary, it's really not a happy place to be. Um, Come on, get on! Yeah, that's gonna stall. Let's wake him back up. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's not working currently, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I'll wait for it to warm up a little bit more because it has been sat for a little while, so uh, we'll just let the oil properly heat through um, before we turn it on. Um, so let's just ease the throttle off. Yeah, bye-bye, Frank. I'm really sorry. No, it's okay. He will live again, hopefully. So turn the key all the way off, turn it back on, let it do all of its uh, system checks, turn all the uh, test lights and the ignition lights and so forth off. Uh, turn the key and fingers crossed, he springs back to life. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. You're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. Oh, my baby can walk again. Oh, it's lovely. So as you can hear there, I'm now hands and legs free. I'm not doing anything. Um, and basically that was, that's absolutely fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it idling now just to get it all the way up to temperature, get the oil all, all nice and circulated and warm. Um, Cause now it's got its fuel trim set at least to idle. Um, and then we're good to get it out of the barn and uh, do some nice panning shots and things. Um, I warn you now, it's a bit dusty, even with an indoor car cover, it's breathable. So a little bit of dust gets through. Um, so don't expect pristine. Uh, thankfully the lighting when I filmed the bits in the barn was very flattering so it looked perfectly shiny and I'm going to claim that I put it away perfectly clean. Obviously I did. 
just going to say I was going to go around and set the camera up so that I can film it coming out the barn. However, I took a walk around here and I just fell in love with that noise again. So I thought I'd share that and uh, I hope you appreciate it. So a big thumbs up, although a little bit oily because it's been sat for a while. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit of smoke there. Also, the exhaust tips aren't quite lined up and that's intentional, obviously, for aerodynamic reasons. Now, joking aside, that's because I'm working on some various bits and pieces and they've been on and off over the winter. So uh, yeah, they still work and they're still connected and they don't leak, so we'll be fine. Hi guys, I'm back again, same video, but we're in Frank, we're about to start him up, and we're about to go and get some petrol. <clears throat> Basically, Frank has passed MOT, woo, let's go. Um, a small problem on emissions, there's some fun and games, and also a, a little problem with some number plate lights and stuff. However, all is resolved, and Frank is now back on the road and happy. However, we now have less than a quarter of a tank of fuel, so let's fire up. <coughs> go for a drive and get some fuel back in him. That's what he sounds like. Definitely worth it. He, she, it's 2020. Could be either or, I think. Now, apologies if uh, we go into this relationship not maintaining full eye contact all the time. Obviously it is much safer. 